Let's talk today about how to use acceptance and commitment processes to counter do-nothingism. Do-nothingism is what I and maybe some other people call a kind of behavioral spiral that one gets into. It might be part of some clinical syndrome like anxiety or depression, or it might not. It might just be part of procrastination or, gosh, who knows what. Whatever we want to call it, in whatever context it occurs, what we're talking about generally always works the same way, which is it starts with a thought like, I don't feel like doing anything. Okay, so I don't feel like doing anything. All right, well, one option is don't do anything. And that's not really a problem sometimes. That's just called rest. We need that sometimes. So rest is actually doing something. It's resting, relaxing, and so forth. We're not talking about that, though. Generally speaking, this do-nothingism comes up when one feels one should be doing something, perhaps with good reason. One would, on one level, really like to be doing something or feels a pressure to do something, and yet one is not doing anything in particular. Perhaps sitting and staring at space, lying down staring at the ceiling, and so forth. Sleeping, waking up, sleeping some more. These are all possibilities. So what to do when you just don't feel like doing anything and you really wish that that were not the case? Well, here's an elegant solution. Don't wait until you feel like doing something. So, easier said than done, I know. And you've probably heard that. Let's look a little bit at how acceptance and commitment processes might be able to help. And again, as usual, this is not acceptable. Uh, this video is not an acceptable substitute for any needed psychological treatment and so forth. But all the same, if we find ourselves in this situation where we have the thought, I don't want to do anything, we can practice diffusion with that thought. Oh, I'm having the thought that I don't want to do anything. No, you say, I'm not having the thought that I don't want to do anything. I really don't want to do anything. Okay, yeah, I know. And it's a thought. I don't think you can prove to me that you don't want to do anything. Let's put it that way. You can tell me again and again that you don't want to do anything. And that's a thought. That's your thought or my thought when I have that thought, which I do sometimes. So step one is noticing that it is a thought. I don't want to do anything. Okay. And is that thought helping you to live the life that you would like to live? And if so, great, we're done. But if not, then maybe that thought's a candidate for diffusion. Maybe we can start by just thinking up a beautiful sign. I don't want to do anything. And just imagining that sign was written in calligraphy. Beautiful calligraphy out there a few feet away from you. Or maybe that sign is a neon sign flashing. I don't want to do anything. 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 And so forth. Have a little fun with it if possible. Getting a little distance on this notion, this thought that I don't want to do anything. Next, we might ask ourselves, if I had the energy and the will and the drive to do something, what would be worth my time? Now, now don't get too, too flustered. We're, I'm not going to do anything yet. Don't get too worried. We're just going to ask that question. If, hypothetically, it were physically possible for me to do something, what would be worth my time to do? Now, we can say, well, nothing. 
that's the first thought I have is nothing. Nothing's worth my time. Okay, fair enough. That's the thought you're having right now. Let's look at it again. In the past, what have you done and why? Why did you get up in the morning so many times to take care of your kids? Why did you go to work over and over and over? Why did you respond to your spouse or significant other when they asked to speak with you? There might be some things you care about, and you might care about those more than honoring your mind's request to do nothing. So maybe we could pick one, whichever one floats up to the top. One of these things, which of course in acceptance and commitment processes, this is the process of valuing, values clarification, noticing that there are some things that we care about, even when our mind is telling us, I don't care about anything. No, no, I don't care about anything. Nothing at all. Other than the fact that I'm not doing anything, which apparently you care about, otherwise you wouldn't watch this video. So apparently you do care about some things. Uh, so, so noticing what it is that might be worth your time if you had the energy. Okay, if we've gotten that far, it's a big assumption, but this is a one-way street. I just have to keep talking at the camera here. But let's say we've gotten that far and you've identified something. Say, for instance, you've identified your children as worth your time. Sorry, those who don't have children, maybe something else. Your artwork, your relationship, your business, your career, uh, your pet rock collection, whatever it is. So now, I know you have no energy whatsoever. And sure. Uh, but let's assume that it were possible for you to spend five minutes moving your arms and legs as if there were some will to do something. Not that there's any will to do anything. I, I understand that there isn't. But what if you were to move your arms and legs marionette-like and make your, your mouth flap where needed in order to produce sounds other people can understand as if you cared. Oh, and I know you don't, but, but as if you cared and specifically about that thing that, well, it turns out you care about. So five minutes, what could you do in five minutes in the service of that? Surely you could muster up the physical capacity for five minutes to, oh, I don't know, email that teacher you've been meaning to email on behalf of your children. Or mm, mm, maybe do something nice for your spouse that you've been meaning to do that's like really small, maybe uh, buying him or her uh, the kind of fruit they like the next time you go to the store. So something really small, really, really small. The smaller the better. The smaller the better. To just open up the tiniest bit of space between the thought I cannot do anything, and the reality of I am doing something uh, in the service of my values. I think I'll take it to here. Maybe I'll get some interesting mail on this one. I think this is a tough nut to crack, so it should be enjoyable and potentially a spirited discussion.